this is one of those where it's a, an interesting and sort of fun ITOT collaboration. We've heard a lot about this over the last several years. Um, it's moved at a somewhat rigorous pace, but it, to some extent, I think ITOT has still continued to sort of flail a little bit. And I think these kinds of partnerships are important. So you got NVIDIA, you know, which is building this metaverse or quote unquote omniverse technology, which is, is an enabler technology for companies to build uh, digital twins, a uh, synthetic replicate uh, data in, in digital environments that you can basically, you know, build buildings, drive vehicles, test uh, your bicycles and other hardware products using uh, NVIDIA's uh, simulation and virtual, uh, virtual simulation software. But companies like Siemens, they're the ones doing this stuff, Pat. So these are the companies that are legitimately working side by side with some of the heaviest and most complex uh, di uh, industrial environments to digitalize them. That's, you know, we talk about things like the zero downtime. We talk about things like factories of the future. It is companies like Siemens. You hear us often talk about Honeywell. It's companies like that. These are the companies that are actually working side by side with the manufacturers and energy companies to actually build future destinations for utilizing data and technology. And so the partnership is, you know, I would say, Pat, it's not like, holy cow, they're taking their technology and blending it together and creating some amazing digital twin technology. What it really seems to be is, it's an enabler platform that's being partnered up on it. With um, you know, Siemens is building an accelerator platform, really under the guise that companies aren't moving fast enough. That's my take on it. I've had a chance to talk to Siemens about this. Not necessarily moving fast enough in the direction of getting their industry four full digital environments up and running, and that the enablement is going to be a differentiator. So making these technologies work together through this accelerator platform, through having an ecosystem environment. What Siemens is basically doing is, is it's encouraging the, the customers that are gonna benefit from this type of transformation to be able to get access to the tools, the training, the technology, to be able to implement um, tech like uh, NVIDIA's Omniverse platform. Um, you know, largely, Pat, I guess I'll just say this. I believe the, the digital twin, the synthetic, autonomous replicated environments that you'll hear Jensen talk about a lot at NVIDIA are going to be critical. We need to be able to basically create, emulate and understand environments before we physically construct them. That could be all kinds of different things, but that's going to be the future. And by the way, that is going to be the, the uh, portal to a metaversial future um, is that we actually know that things that we're creating in these digital worlds and these physical worlds are um, completely, you know, they're safe, they're tested, they're understood, that the data that's being replicated, you know, it's like I said, it's it's symbiotic, if you ask me. Uh, sometimes announcements like these are much more like, here's the product, they've built a widget box, and this is what you're going to do together. I think right now they're more saying, this is a really great example of when IT, traditional data center technologies, marries companies that are at the edge, building robotics and factories and healthcare machines and how we put this together, get the data and make it sensible, utilize and put it into place at a faster speed to enable impact faster digital transformation. Because that's important and we need to digitally transform our businesses. Um, so just steps, I call it baby steps, but a good partnership between two companies that are really trying to, to, to speed along the digitalization of heavy industries. Oh, I know. I mean, you know, we do all this analog uh, transformation right now, and yeah. we really do need to move it to uh, digital. No, I'm just kidding. It's all connected by coax, Pat. Well, it is, and I mean, but if you connect the front end to the back end, I mean, you solve a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> all no, right. Just, uh, just kidding, audience. No, listen. This is a, a couple things going on here. So, first of all, when it comes to the metaverse, uh, really, maybe there was maybe one or two use cases that, that, that makes sense. This whole notion of uh, VR with, uh, with training uh, at this point, uh, and the second is the digital twin. It, it just makes sense. And when you have industrial tech companies like Siemens who really don't have the resources to do some of the deep tech required, if you can't build it, you, you have to partner. And I'm actually surprised this, this didn't uh, happen uh, quicker, but uh, you know, it, to, to, to be very clear on what they're doing, they're connect, Siemens is connecting their accelerator uh, partner ecosystem 
uh, to the NVIDIA Omniverse. So this is Siemens being part and in buying into uh, the NVIDIA Omniverse, which is, is, is a huge one, right? When I think of companies, industrial tech like Siemens, uh, like Honeywell, they, they need to be doing uh, things uh, like this. Um, is this a big announcement? Uh, maybe, but see, the metaverse is not about big home runs. I mean, the metaverse, I think, is about chipping away and finding use cases that make sense uh, for companies to either, you know, make more money or reduce costs. And and this is is a uh, digital twin is a huge requirement, uh, I think, uh, for the industrial uh, IoT. And I like to think of I like to think of digital twins as kind of having a man in the middle uh, type type of thing. Daniel, you have to you have to wonder if the if the ro robots or the bots or the machines were running it, they wouldn't need a digital twin. Digital twin is because as humans, we have to see if a a physical manifestation of something, even though we might be uh, a thousand uh, a thousand miles away. But anyways, th these are kind of the things that uh, uh, that I think about. So. Uh, it's also that you know the kind of uh, stuff that can bubble up in a quieter part of the tech world, <laughs> in a quieter period of in our tech world, because you know this is cool stuff that probably wouldn't normally bubble up to the height because of how many just go, how much tech is going on. But in the July August month, sometimes uh, we get to cover some different cool smaller changes that are going on in the market. Have you ever thought about the metaverse though? Sorry, the digital twin as as really this crutch between going all machines. Humans are the only ones who need the digital twin, right? Or, or am, I, am I looking at wrong? So for instance, I, I'm managing a, a building a thousand miles away. I, I can zoom in. I can see everything in their physical sense as, as I understand it. It almost seems like a crutch in a way before uh, the machines would take something over. But what do you think? Well, I mean, you know, if you look at how deep learning and neural networks work, eventually the building should, much like a like a rack of servers in the data center, with uh, proper training, eventually they start to learn how to cure certain things that are going on. Right? It starts off we're writing scripts, and then the machine learns and understands that hey, when this happens, do this, and so it's kind of like a building. You know, the it's supposed to have a, it's it's as simple as like looking like air conditioning the way it works as silly as it is Pat the building learns right you teach it a behavior it gets smarter yeah. keeps learning and what I'm saying is it's like oh it's too warm you know what I mean like well that that's kind of yeah, I mean yeah the reason I mean it took about 20 years to go to, to a lights out data center I was um, I was when I was at AMD back in 2006 we were Google's number one supplier of microprocessors and and they had at that point only about 30 uh, humans per per data center and you know here we are in 2022 so yeah maybe it's a maybe it's a, a a matter of time but I kind of think this digital twin thing is just a a man in the middle crutch until we I, I think it's uh fascinating though like I said I, I think of it more from like a technology development like the car of the future like how can you build it you know I'm we're gearheads, right? How can you build it and drive it and experience it in this completely replicate? Like you create the city of Austin in a digital twin, and then yeah. you design the car, and then you have the car just driving around. And I mean, you can have everything. I mean, in the future, you get everything down to the potholes on Cesar Chavez to understand what, what the dynamics of the suspension. Are. I mean, it's kind of cool, Pat. I mean, it, it, I do understand the crush, but I also think it's it's kind of cool. You know, maybe we could be digital twinned and someone could write some of this research for me. Sorry, I had to I had to mute me while I my dogs barked and I had to sneeze. But uh, no, I, 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 I totally get it. Um, hang on one sec. Man. Bless you, sir. You're not allowed to sneeze when you're podcasting. No, I know it's crazy. By the way, uh, the latest airplanes that are out there, commercial airplanes, don't actually need a windshield. Right. So. But uh, we feel better when there are, are humans there to, to do that. So, uh, Daniel. Uh, I mean, they don't need a pilot, right? Pilot, yeah. They well, do no, need a they wind. don't need a windshield. I mean, they need a pilot. Well, technically, we don't need pilots, right? If, if you truly use the next generation of, 
of, of electronics out there. But we just feel better by having uh, by having a man in the middle. So, or a woman, by the way, I guess a person in the middle. Yeah. Good job.